Question of the day. What is your favorite game in which you're building a house or a building? There are a lot of options. Palaces of Mad King and Ludwig. Between two Palaces of Mad King and Ludwig. Blueprints of Mad King. There's a lot of these games. But today we're talking about a manor, as it were. Not all manner of evil, but a dice manor. A manor in which you are building a manor to put dice people in. Now, this is a dice placement game. Relatively quick from Arcane Wonders in the Dice Tower Essentials line. So why would I be reviewing a game that's already clearly highly acclaimed and thought of? Because I have different tastes in things. So I'm looking at this game completely objective, just like anybody else would as a reviewer. Dice Manor from Arcane Wonders. Let's take a look at what it does, how it plays, and we'll go from there. But let me know in the comments below what is your favorite building or house building game. All right, this is Dice Manor set up for two players. There is no difference to the setup except for the fact that your players are on the board and that's it. Everything else is set up the same. You separate the different building types into their categories. You've got the tele, 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 television, <laughs> that's kind of, the television TV room here, the water rooms, the key rooms, the book rooms, the food rooms, and the bedrooms. Now they're also technically by shapes. These three symbols down here are single squares. The doors will different will be different. These are kind of double squares, but they're only one room. These are double squares here, but there are two rooms here, here. These are big giant squares, but they're only one room. However, they have a lot of door entrances. A couple rules about placement that you will know later is that you have to make sure that doors always line up. You could never block a door. So this space is not legal here, whereas this space is. However, this space is not because you can't have your front door going out. So doors always have to connect. You can never cut off a wall. So the name of the game is Dice Manor because you have these dice. Everybody will begin the round, they'll roll these dice. Then you'll separate everything into the numbers that are the same. So we have two, three, fours, and sixes right now. Now, unlike a normal dice placement game where that's your turn, where, excuse me, that's your whole round, this is just a single turn to pick one of these numbers. And when you pick a number, you have to use all the dice of that number. So let's just say we use sixes. I now have three dice to use. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mention this now. These tokens here will allow you to either re-roll any as many dice as you want, or you can bump dice up and down by using that. Uh, sixes and ones do roll across to each other. Now, the thing is, if you choose a number of dice, you have to use all of those dice, which means you have to place them. And there are three main places to put them. Number one is you can bid along the track on the outside to be uh, in the runnings for getting these tiles added to your manor. So let's just say I went here with a six. Now, because you can only go here with sixes, I would go ahead and just put all three. Now, the reason that matters is the number doesn't so much matter when bidding here. It's the number of dice. So if someone comes in with four twos, they actually bid out beat, outbid me. Except you can't here because you have to use the same number. But if somebody goes in there with four sixes, they have the bid. If they were to bid three, they would have to outbid me. You can't tie. The tie goes to the person who's already there. So that's how you re uh, reconcile those. You will go around the board and gain those tiles. You don't collect though until after everyone's placed all of their dice. Now when it comes back, you don't keep those numbers, you roll again. So now we have two sixes and two twos, how funny. Second place you can put it is on the advertising track. So first place, second place, third place, the same thing works. So let's say I go here with two twos. Now this is what I was talking about earlier, or even better. Let's say someone has gone here with two fives. And then I go there Let's say I spend two tokens to bump that to a two. I go there with three twos. Now the number is lower, but the dice is higher, but they are in second place. Now if they come back with a third five, this is now a tie because it's three and three, but then you go to the numbers. The number fives beat two, so this person would go back in the first place. There's only one first place and one second place winner. There's as many third place winners as there are, usually four, or two, excuse me. And then the third thing you can do is put your, uh, give a tour of the house. This number is, well, it's a question mark here, but this number dictates what number of dice has to go there. So a two can go there. And let's just say I had this one sitting here. Had I chosen my twos as my actions, I could go two, two in one action. And depending on how many dice you place in a turn, you get this bonus. So if we place one, we get one of these tokens. Two is two points, three is five points, four is nine points and then an additional two points for each dice past that. And you start with, I believe it's two, four, six, uh, nine minus two. So you start with seven and you can gain these two. So now that we've talked about that, you get your bonus. At the end of the round, you're gonna get a point per dice in your manor. Also, 
you're, you're going to do this at the end of the game, this final phase here, the grand opening, in which you're going to do this same thing. That'll be the only turn everybody does is do tours of their building or tours of their manor. If you ever get to a point where you can't place a dice that you rolled that round, you have to sit them outside and they become an unhappy guest and they're three minus three points at the end of the game. Now, collect phase happens. You'll grab your tiles. Then you'll bid here. The person who wins first moves this token up two spaces and gets every point that they cover, so three and three is six. And then their bid, their, their dice, first dice moves as many spaces as they bid. So if we had three, this would go one, two, three. So if these touch, you don't get points going this way, only this one. If these touch, you gain this dice. So that's how you unlock the dice. And that's pretty much how you play. You're gonna play four rounds of that. You're gonna reset here, and then you're gonna give the final tour. And again, a couple of things about final scoring that's pretty important to note. So number one, there are points for diverse, diversity of your room. So if you have all six different types of rooms, you get 15 points. Five is nine, four is four. If you get the longest, largest manor, if you have the largest manor, it's 12 points, and then six points for second place. It's a point for every two uh, influence tokens at the end of the game. And then here, you do color majority, whoever has the most red, blue, green, yellow. And that's how that works. That's how you play Dice Manor. Person with the most points wins the game. So that's it. That is Dice Manor. Now, first and foremost, the game looks good. I like the way the tiles look. I mean, we know the tiles look great. Just when you look down on them, they've got a lot of little intricate art in there. I love the way they're placed. I love the fact that there is no symbology in this game except gain uh, inspiration token or whatever they're called. I, th I think I called them influence in the teach, but it's inspiration token, I believe. That's really the only symbology is to do that. Now, so that covers art and art direction. The game looks great and it it's easy to interpret what it wants you to do from that. But how does the game play? That's really what matters. Well, first and foremost, I really like how this plays. It plays, first of all, very quick. It's only four and a half rounds. It's very fast. And it's very easy to understand what to do. But there's a lot of strategy. Do I bid? Do I do my twos now, which I have three of? Or do I, do I use my sixes, which I only have two of, so that I can get my bid out there? Or do I hope that I get this so I can put these dice in my manor and get more points this round or more visitors this round? Or do I put this single dice in my manner so I can get a token to manipulate my dice next time? There's a lot of choices that come to this. And yes, what I love about it is there's only three options. You're putting it out on the bid for the tiles. You're bidding for the marketing, for the influence, uh, the, the marketing part, or you're putting it in your manner. But even in that simple choosing, there's a lot of things to think about. And that, to me, is where the beauty of this game lies. It is simple and quick and easy to pick up. It's easy to teach. It's easy to learn. But at the end of the day, it really is thought-provoking. Okay, what do I do on my turn? But what I love is, at no point does it bog down. I also really like the idea of picking a set of dice, using all of them, and then re-rolling, as opposed to, this is your turn for the round, right? Like a Kingsburg or something like that, where you separate them, you go, okay, this is what I have to use. But in this, that idea changes, because you go, okay, well, huh, do I keep this so that I can, or do I have to go with these now? So anyway, Dice Manor is a great game. It deserves all the praise it gets. It is a fantastic game. It's an eight and a half for me. Really, really love this game. Solid, solid game. Go pick up Dice Manor. It is a perfect quick game to play. It's got just the right feel for people who like worker placement, dice placement, as well as the people who like building out stuff and getting points for those sort of things and collecting sets of colors and symbols. So this is just a really, really great intro, not intro level, lighter weight game with some medium elements to it. So if you hadn't picked this up yet, definitely go pick this up. It is a fantastic game and you're going to love to play it. So let me know in the comments below what you think of Dice Manor and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to check out the Dice Tower merch store at dicetowerstore.com. We have some great new ideas coming right there and we will get to that soon. But uh, till then, we'll see you.